I challenge you to do it. Okay, so not actually to a duel, but I do challenge you. A GABA challenge, that is. So we're going to talk about how to test yourself for leaky gut, and this is done through the GABA challenge. GABA is a neurotransmitter. Low levels are linked with anxiety, mood disorders, epilepsy, and chronic pain. GABA supplements are often used to help with anxiety, improving sleep, PMS, premenstrual syndrome, and ADHD, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. While there's a good amount of controversy and debate over the subject and GABA in general, this is how I use GABA in my practice, both, both as a therapeutic nutraceutical and sometimes as a semi-diagnostic aid. So first, in order to understand a little bit more about how and why this test works and what we're trying to achieve, we have to understand what GABA is. So I'm going to switch over to my little whiteboard on my iPad and give you a little narrated drawing to explain things a little bit more. So watch this. Okay guys, here's a quick physiology lesson on how the nerves work. It'll help you understand how and why GABA can be very useful for anxiety and also how and why the GABA challenge will work. So your nerves work like this. You have a resting potential, which is the point at which your nerve rests. And then you have an action potential, or the threshold, at which the nerve fires. So you've got this space in between here that if the, ner if the nerve in isn't stimulated to this point, it's not going to fire and you're not going to have the function that that nerve has. So if you get a little bit of stimulation, doesn't reach that point, then comes back down, then you're not going to feel it. But if, you, if it goes up and then it hits that threshold, now the nerve fires, comes back down, and then you feel what that nerve is supposed to do. So all your neurotransmitters are excitatory. GABA is an inhibitory. So what can happen is a lot of times with anxiety, this threshold or this resting potential moves up. And it becomes very close to the action threshold. So now it takes a very little amount of stimulation to stimulate your nerves. So it's very easy to become overstimulated and you get anxiety. So what GABA can do, since it's inhibitory, it takes this resting potential here and it can move it back down here. So now that can help with the anxiety because you can tolerate more stimulation without it stimulating your nerves and getting that action. So that's how GABA works with anxiety and why we're going to do the test and kind of how that works. So keep watching and we'll continue in the video. Okay, so after watching the little uh, narrated drawing, hopefully you better understand how GABA should work. So moving on. So now that you have a general idea of what GABA is, let's talk about the test specifically. First, how do we do the test? A GABA challenge is typically done using pure GABA at a dosage of 600 to 1500 milligrams. I tend to start on the low side and see some, how someone does and then possibly retest with higher dosages if we need to. The type of response that would indicate a positive result, not necessarily a good thing, is a nice calm, relaxed type feeling. Generally not tired, but just kind of chilled out. Usually clients will feel effects within the first hour sometimes up to three hours later. I generally recommend doing this test around 3 or 4 p.m. Don't do it at a time when you're normally getting tired anyway because it will be hard to determine why you're relaxed or tired, such as just having eaten a large meal. Also, don't do the test and then go out for a night on the town or go to work or whatever else you might want to do that day. Just stay in for the day in case you, it might hit you later than the three hours. If you think you might have had a response, but aren't really sure, just repeat the test at a slightly higher dose in the next day or two. Don't use too much GABA, or don't do this too often, because you can take in too much. For a good quality GABA supplement that I often use in my practice for testing and or for treatment, click on the links. I often use GABA for anxiety in my clients, but also as a semi-diagnostic test. This is why how it kind of works. And I understand that nothing is in absolutes, and there is some controversy here. But this is what I found in my practice. So normally, GABA is too big to cross the blood-brain barrier, meaning if you ingest it and it's too big to be absorbed by the body, it should just pass through you and have no effects. Now keep in mind there are certain new forms of GABA that are being developed that reportedly are better absorbed. Don't use those ones for this test. 
So if you have a nice, calm, relaxed feeling after taking GABA, it means that it crossed the blood-brain barrier, and thus there is a good chance you have some degree of leaky gut. Leaky gut equals leaky brain. Leaky brain equals leaky gut. So if GABA works for you, that's great because you can use it to help you sleep, relax better, or help with anxiety. But it also means there's a probably a good chance you've got some digestive issues that you're not aware of, or maybe you were aware of them and weren't quite sure. Now here is a couple other tidbits that you need to be aware of. It has been reported, and I've noted in some of my patients, that GABA, in a way, can backward convert to glutamic acid, which is an excitatory neurotransmitter, and can cause increase in irritability, anxiety, or the feeling of being overstimulated. We don't really know who this will occur in, but just know that this is a possible outcome as well. In my experience, it happens in approximately 5 to 10% of people that do the test, or I should say that do the test and have a positive result, meaning that it's crossed the blood-brain barrier. Keep in mind that this type of reaction is also a positive result, and it means that the GABA has crossed the blood-brain barrier. Although now you can't use it for relaxation or anxiety. Kind of a bummer. One other tidbit. This test is not 100% sensitive or specific. It can give us a general idea of how things are functioning. This crude home test can often rule in the possibility of leaky gut if it's positive, but it cannot rule out the possibility of leaky gut if it's negative. So there you have it. How and why you should use GABA Challenge. If you do this test and aren't really sure how to go about fixing your issues in a leaky gut, give my office a call and we'd be happy to help you out. It's one of the most common things we see. P.S. I also do virtual visits for those that are not in the area. I'm Dr. Craig Mortensen. Chill out. Be healthy. Be happy.